Thank you. Uh, and uh, very good uh, evening to one and all present here. Uh, so this session is uh, on very interesting topic, renewable energy and power electronics uh, uh, interface for a renewable energy technology. While targeting uh, MSME as a sector, uh, as we know, most of this electricity, most, I mean, the most important energy that MSME consume is electrical energy. And looking at the target of achieving net zero by 2070 that India has set up to meet up the SDGs goal, sustainable development goals, uh, we personally feel like uh, if MSME being the, uh, the leading uh, uh, industries for economic development of any country, uh, per se in India, uh, if we integrate renewable energy at an MSME sector and partly contribute to the electricity uh, drawn by the MSME would really uh, help and support uh, towards the transition of uh, green and the clean energy uh, in India. Uh, with that uh, setting up a tone, I, it's my pleasure to uh, chair this session uh, and very interesting topic. Uh, this session uh, where the keynote uh, addressed by uh, Mr. Gautam Das. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, have a quick introduction of uh, Mr. Gautam Das. Uh, he is a founder and CEO of sustainability startup uh, Urjan Cleantech, uh, which is co-founded by IITNs and ex-bankers. Urjan offers turnkey renewable energy solutions, including financing to end consumers like residential CNI consumers. Uh, Urjan enabled more than 200 megawatt of solar and wind energy in a short uh, span of time. The company operates across the 22 states and uh, union territories in India. Uh, Mr. Gautam studied uh, chemical engineering uh, at IIT, Man IIT Mumbai and finance uh, MBA at the Indian School of uh, Business. He grew up in a remote village in India and grew up uh, to the rank, rank of director in the Indo-American Bank, Citibank, and worked in India and abroad before founding Urjan. He is an avid uh, ultramarathoner, open water sea swimmer, and trekker. With this uh, very brief uh, bio sketch of Mr. Gautam, I would now like to invite him to deliver a keynote address uh, related to uh, the renewable energy uh, and power electronics uh, in MSME. Thank you very much. Over to you. Good evening. I said good evening. Good evening. Okay, just want to check everybody is awake and ready to hear me, okay? Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. And uh, specifically, thank you to my friends and Dr. Professor Chinmay Korai. We studied together at IIT Bombay. Then he became a doctorate. I went for my MBA. And I worked with an American bank for 16 years, India and outside, as he said. And thanks for the generous introduction. You must be hearing that um, ESG is a big topic now. Environmental, social, and government governance. Nobody is going to lend you, maybe five years down the line, if you're running a company and your process is not compliant with ESG. Let's take example of this group, these this people in this house, in this room. Almost all of us are having a smartphone and one smartphone is equivalent to one kilowatt. And you completely write it off. You'll hear a lot of numbers from me because I'm an ex-banker and an entrepreneur. So this smartphone, you write up in four years, you depreciate in a linear terms without interest, almost 25%, right? This 40,000 rupees, for example, if you invest in renewable energy, it will, it will give you a return almost 30%. And you look at 30%, take any commodity in India, be it currency, equity, house, real estate, gold, anything you buy, that'll give you primarily close to GDP return, which is about say 5, 6% or 7% and mutual fund will give you 12%. But still, more household in India will have smartphone rather than one kilowatt of solar. And I'm very proud to say that when I worked with Siri Bank, I worked with, I headed a business for MSME and mid corporate in India. And, and MSME 
employs almost 40%, 33% of, of our people, I mean employed people in the country. And that's a very large number, three and a half, four crore people are, are, are employed in this sector. And the tax wise also, although the sector is very unorganized, it's significantly high, correct? So without EPN to grow to a five, 10 trillion dollar economy in next couple of years, the environmental and economy need to go hand in hand. Otherwise, it's not possible. Today, what we're doing is we're borrowing from our next generation. I mean, solar energy, wind energy, renewable energy, at the cost of production, if I look at one unit, I can give you power at four rupees. I can give an example. On the biggest mall in Ahmedabad, it's Alpha Mall, the electricity bill, for example, just take an example, say 20 crore rupees per year, only for the CAM, common area maintenance. We have installed windmill in Rajkot, which is a couple of hundred kilometers away from Ahmedabad, and bringing that power here at about five rupees odd, and the cost came down drastically from 20 crore rupees to 10 crore rupees, and our investment was hardly about 30 crore. That means that investment comes back within three odd years, and this annuity saving will continue for, for 25 years. So a product which is environmentally responsible and commercially viable, still the adoption is very, very low. Let's take an example of New Zealand. New Zealand is hardly about 10, 11 or 12 lakh household country. If you go in Bombay, you cross from Borivili to Andheri, that means you cross almost New Zealand. That's the number of people that country has. But the adoption of renewable energy is very, very good. So why it's not happening? There are a couple of issues. As somebody already said, uh, 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 Sarah has already said that um, in MSME, your one of the input cost is energy cost. Let's take an example. If you spend about 10,000 units per month and you spend about Gujarat may about 1 lakh rupees per year, if you invest 30 odd lakh rupees, you get your money back within about 30 odd months or 32 odd months and this annuity saving will continue. But still, why are you not doing it? First thing, it's not your core business. So there should be a company or entrepreneur, people like us, like the company I run. We invest this 30 lakh rupees in your company. If you want to install solar on your rooftop, we'll install that. You can pay on monthly basis. So that's a convenience we bring. So in our company, you are bankers, engineers, and lawyer. So we bring money and give it to you. And just we take care of only one thing, that you have no intention to default. Ability of default is, is not an issue because you will pay me less than what you save. So we do bring financing and financing are the biggest enabler in renewable energy. That's why that's what is missing. That's what we enable. In a very short span of time, we're about five, six years old company. We have deployed about 1,000 crore and deployed almost say, about 200 megawatt. It's a couple of million trees, you can say. I mean, in this room today, we must have consumed, for example, about, say, 20 or 30 units or 40 units. And one unit is equivalent to 900 grams of carbon dioxide generation if you compare with coal. For example, this campus itself, my guess is about, say, annually spending energy is very close to about 10 crore rod across hostel, labs, and everything put together. You can switch to complete renewable energy. And people like us, as I said, we bring money to enable that because this is a not core business. You don't understand this technology. We are confident. We lend money. And believe me, bankers are the last guys to be convinced. They want to romance with return without romancing risk. So we assess how much is the risk. And then we invest money so that the benefit we get, for example, 30% yield product, you get 15%, I get 15%, which is more than my mutual fund. So that's why I am in this industry. Second thing is, Awareness is big time missing. And I'm very privileged to be in this room that you represent and I represent 1% of India in terms of access to education, access to resource, and your tested intelligence because you've come to IIT and in the other premium institute. If we can't do it, nobody can do it. And that's why we thought, I mean, three of us from IIT Bombay, I mean, we started in, I mean, few of us started in India and US, worked in American Bank and other companies in India and abroad, but we thought if we can't do it, nobody can do it, correct? So action is the only strategy, and that's why we, we, we promote entrepreneurship. So other than building awareness and funding you, what we do is we collaborate with people. We have a couple of hundred crore turnover companies with only 40 people. What do you do? 
Now, if you look at the people who are installing solar or delivering solution, with due respect to many of them, they are glorified electrician. But believe me, I have project in Patna, Dehradun, Cochin, Coimbatore, Bengal, Gujarat, MP, Satna, Dehradun. I can't go and execute. So that's what we, people like us, a startup like us, we train the last mile electrician. What is solar? What is the commercial break-even? And what can go wrong in installation? In Chennai, for example, there is a cyclone of 200 km per hour. It should not blow out. That's what we train. So we have an institute called Green Institute. Anyone of you want to study about renewable energy, the commercial aspect, the unit economy aspect, if I fund you, what is the return, what is the ROI, what can go wrong in installation, what can go wrong in your adoption experience post installation if nobody maintains it. So this is what we collaborate with across India, I mean young entrepreneurs, uh, startup guys, electrician to deliver solution. So we bring money, we give a turnkey solution to the end consumer, but I don't go open, and I, I don't install it myself. We train people, they represent Urja my company and do it. So building awareness and building ability and bringing everybody together which was missing, not only us, there are many companies like this company called Zanruf, the co-founded by IIT Kharagpur guys. There is my son, there are Solar Square, there are Freer. But we use technology and give solution to the end consumer. We are very, very people slim. We have 45 people, our target is to do about 250 crore turnover this year. And you collaborate with people so that young entrepreneur in Patna, they get some work, but the engineering designing is given by us, financing is given by us. And if we do collaborate, we can deliver a big solution. I mean, if you look at a couple of crore MSMEs in India, and I'm assuming whatever is your operating cost, about 10 to 15 percent is electricity. If I can give you a solution without investment from your side, and you can still adopt solar, of course, we'll test your credit history and everything, then we all benefit. You also benefit and also benefit. That should happen. I'll go back to, again, ESG. So without taking care of environment, you can't grow. Even if you grow, you are borrowing from your future generation or you are borrowing for, you borrowed from your previous generation. So sustainability is must. Without that, it can't happen. Now, why social? We work on not only environment, on social as well. Let's give an example. If I'm in, in I stay in Bombay, I'm here today, and my wife is also working. If my kid is taken care of by, by a Didi who is the domestic help, if her kid is not well, sorry, I had a sea swimming yesterday, I'm a little bit of. So, uh, so if her kid, thank you, sir. If her kid is not well, you don't expect your kid to. So that, that social bonding is. Very, very important. So ESG, for all of us, whether you run a MSME, whether you run a large corporates, or you can a like Papad Bedne Wale, micro entrepreneur, for everybody, it's very, very important that social bonding is, is essential. And globally, suddenly that became a topic. So Ramu Kaka jo kaam karte the, Ramu Kaka ka ghar pe koi problem hoga, then you can't grow. That the same package is, is, is offered as a platform that's called ESG. And why now there is a, that is the second part, that's a social inclusion and ensure that gender diversity across age group, across sex, across states, you employ people and take care of them so that you are interdependent, you are not dependent on each other. And third is governance. So if you don't govern, if there is no mechanism, I could be industry, I officially can show that my influence are not not released on the uh, soil directly or without treatment. That's why institute like you are working together to set up that mechanism and to make it cost effective and as efficient, as business friendly as possible. But at the same time, governance is, is mandatory. So three pillars of running a sustainable economy is environment, social and governance. That's become a big theme. And I repeat, the amount of Capital it can bring to our country is enormous. India is a 30 crore household country. Let's take that example. New Zealand is a 50 lakh people, about maybe 10 lakh or 12 lakh household country. You are a 30 crore household country. The opportunity is enormous. Our power consumption across India, it's not the exact number, broadly about 1,000 odd gigawatt. In terms of money, that's almost like 500 trillion dollar type. Okay. $5 trillion, sorry. 
So one, one megawatt is almost like half a million. Uh, so that's the size. And globally, you have a mandate that we have to be as carbon neutral as possible. So this is the country which has workforce, which is the country which can manufacture a lot of stuff, a lot of brilliant institute who can improve the technology. That's why if you look at the government, they have given PLI. Almost 20,000 crore has come to renewable energy sector where government is saying that we'll incentivize manufacturers so that our cost of production comes down and eventually will not be over dependent on countries like China. That's parallelly a lot of things are happening. So ecosystems are at the right time. Opportunity is enormous. There are factors we can enable together, we can collaborate together, we can deliver. So I'd say if you are a student, please come forward <coughs> and do something in sustainability. Focus which will, will fuel the economy in a sustainable way. And you also at the same time become an entrepreneur. And also very, very happy to hear and, and, and uh, to be here as well. Uh, that we, are, we have premium institute who can help you to, uh, to support business and become the technology backbone and improve or enhance the technology over a period of time. So that's the basic theme that uh, without taking care of environment, it can't grow and it is commercially viable and environmentally responsible. So let's collaborate and work together. Uh, thank you once again uh, uh, for having me, giving me the opportunity to be here and thank you for your present hearing. Thank you. Thank you, sir.